when you want to know if two of your quality assessors would give the same ranking to the same product, and often you would like to know that for sure, then you use Kohanskapa. But what if you got five or six people that should give the same answer? There's a different way for that, and let's discuss that one in this video. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel, where we make operational excellence practical. And today we've got a bit of a statistics video again. It really is a tool, right? So I'll be explaining a little bit on, on when and why to use it, uh, but we'll mainly just dive into the practical details. So I hope you like these kind of videos. Also, you know, hit that like button, but tell me in the comments, do you want these type of very tool-focused videos? Would you like me to make a template for this tool? Drop it down in the comments. I'm planning on it, but no, that's still in the works. It takes a little bit more work than only making a couple of drawings on a piece of paper. But Enough of that. When we're talking about a kappa analysis, and I've got a previous video on that, where we talk about the normal kappa analysis, which is Cohen's kappa, and this only works with two people that have two options as an answer. So you still, well, you would like to have something like 30 or 50 or so products to test, that would be ideal, but there's only two assessors and only pass-fail, right? Or big, small, or some other binary choice. Now, I can fully imagine that you have some tests where, well, first of all, you have multiple people. This you can do with a version of Cohen's Kappa, which I have explained in that other video. But if you have add more people and even maybe more options, there is actually a nicer way to get a total rank picture. Because that variant on Cohen's Kappa, that will tell you for each of the people, each of the assessors, how they do versus sort of a golden standard. Fleiss Kappa, it's a different statistician, uh, he made a system where you can basically get one big scoring for your whole measurement system, which is something we would often also like to have, with the added bonus that you can use it for a free bucket system or a five-star ranking system or something like that, right? So any discrete information. So let's dive into that one. <coughs> So here I drew a super small grid, and you can expand this quite a bit, but it just doesn't fit on the paper. So here what I did on purpose is I have three categories that I can sort my product into. These can be sort of ranked like what we call ordinal data, like first class, second class, sort of reject, can be, but they can also be completely different categories like uh, white, green, other. So the only thing here, it is important that one product falls into one of these categories. So you cannot use this to say damaged yes, no, big yes, no, okay, yes, no. So th that is not allowed, right? One person has to put his product into one of these categories. Now what's the other axis here in the chart? That is how many of these products do you have? How many samples, how many decisions, how many products have the, the parts in Gage r, r Now there's one more thing. These will not become a yes, no, or a one, zero. Here is the number of assessors that put product number one into category A or B or C. So if you have six people that all check the same product, of course, they do it separately, right? Don't let them discuss the answers, but that's the same with all of these measurement systems analyses. Do not let them discuss. They should write down their own answers. You afterwards compare it, add it all together. And uh, what we would sort of hope is that all six of them say, right, product one is an A category product. So all six say that. Well, what does that leave? Nothing for the rest. Now, product two, it should preferably, oh, there should be some variation in here, should not also be an A category product and a three and four as well. So when you do the sample selection, sort of make sure that there is a couple of edge cases in there, right? So you can pick a relatively large random sample, which is the preferred way. It's also the, the way you usually do with a, a, a Cohen's, a regular Kappa analysis. But what you can also do is sort of give some extra weight to defects or 
not so common classifications, but you would like, that's the best situation, to be relatively close to the, the real percentages that come out of your production. That's why a large random sample would be good, but then you have a lot of products. So let's say that that second product, you know, uh, it's, not a, it's not an A-class product, right? Everybody agrees on that. But two of our assessors say it's a B, and four say that it's a C. That's how we will jot that down and see that the sum of scores for each of the product will be six every time because all six assessors should assess every product and they can all only give one of these classifications. So if you need a something else category, well then you'll have to add a category. Make sure that one row always adds up to the total number of people who are assessing the product. So I'll just fill in a little bit more data, just as example data. And so this way it's all six. Now, we can, first of all, sort of see you know, what, what is the, the chance of it, so in our whole production, how many A's, how many B's, how many C's do we expect? And we take that data from these assessors. Okay, so in total, uh, we have four products times six assessors, so that's 24. Seven divided by 24 is 29%, or 0.29. Uh, this one's also seven. And this one is a tad more at 10. Now, this, of course, will add up to one, or 100%, right? Because there are 24 numbers here all summed, so that will add up to one. This is used in a bit to sort of establish a baseline, right? Just as with Cohen's kappa, Fleisch's kappa, it also takes as its estimate, its statistical estimate, you know, what if all of your assessors sort of, sort of know, right, that 30% is A, 30% is B, 40% is C, roughly. And with that knowledge, they just fill it in sort of randomly. That is when there is no correlation, right? So that randomness is what will be calculated from these. But we'll get to that in a bit. Now, we also want to know, so to what extent do our assessors agree? And that, agreeal, that agreement is always, in this case, between zero and one. See, we're not really checking the inverses. So if you completely randomize it, if you just put sort of the same number everywhere, then you get to zero. And there is no real way to get it into a minus, which in Cohen's kappa there will be, because if people say exactly the same, uh, exactly the opposite about products, it'll go negative. But those are details. So between zero, no correlation, and one, perfect correlation. So what do you think the score should be for product one? For this, we don't even really need to calculate. Of course, the formula will give us the same result, but you see, everybody agrees that it's a category or a product. So, that's perfect correlation on this product. But then here, it gets a bit more tricky. Now, it's not just a normal uh, average or subtracting a little bit from a, from a mean or something like that. You know, statistics people, they love their, um, their squares and their roots and they're dividing by the number of degrees of freedom and all of that. So there is a bit of a formula behind this. Uh, and the formula is, Let's square all of these. So that's actually zero squared. And then it's again with that degree of freedom kind of thinking in mind. We deduct from that the non-squared just number of assessors. So that's six, right? In total of six. So that, that six doesn't really change for any of the lines, but these will change. So this would have been six squared plus zero plus zero minus six. And then we have to divide that, and we'll have to divide it by the number of assessors and then times the degrees of freedom in the assessments. So that's in practice, that means number of assessors times number of assessors minus one. That is just a given for how this formula is made. If you want to know exactly what's behind uh, the Google specifically this formula, 
and then you'll have to go through about six lines of a very nice uh, mathematical statistical formulation where uh, certain parts of the equation are put together and then if you like statistics check it out if you just want to do the test take my word for it I did check those sites so that is not completely the square of the number of assessors but assessors times assessors minus one now what do you get then in this case, there is a 0.47. You could say 47%, but that's not fair, right? Because, yes, technically this is the same as 47%, but if you say percent, then it just feels like this is a linear scale, which it is not. So, a 0.47 sort of correlation factor for that product. Now, we can use this same formula for each of the lines. And we'll get the factors for each of the products. Now here what we can do is we can take a simple average. So if we average all of that, we get 0.70. Now 0.70, that's nice, that doesn't tell us anything yet. Right? We are going to do exactly the same as for Cohen's kappa. So that's why this is, this is the kappa part that we're now getting to. Uh, that's what's also called a kappa. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, compare this to the estimate value in a special way, in the kappa way. So that estimate value, hmm, for the estimate value of this here, we're again going to use that funny trick with the squares. But here we can just sum the squares and be done with it. So these uh, intermediate values. You understand where they come from, right? It's the chance in, of an A in the whole population. We're going to square it and add it to the others. And if we add that up, we come to the expected value. And that basically means that just randomly filling in, but taking these chance ratios into account. So that's 0.34. That one we are going to compare to 0.7. Now, of course, we're not just going to compare it. We're going to compare it with the kappa. So what is that? And this one is exactly the same as the Cohen's kappa. So we take the observed correlation, the observed agreement between the assessors minus the expected agreement. And then we divide it by perfect agreement minus the expected agreement from random. So if you do have perfect here, it will become one. But this just puts it on a gradient from zero to one. If you divide this, then you get to our kappa result, which is 0.54. Now, when we talk about Cohen's kappa, so two choices, two assessors, then we tend to say that we want at least 0.7, right? 0.7 is good enough, 0.85, yeah, that's, that's a nice measurement system. For this system, one gentleman has uh, proposed a scale, but there is much debate about it. And the thing is, he proposed it for basically a two by two. So he basically proposed it for the same situation. You can use Cohen's kappa and then sort of match up. It's, it's a lot friendlier on the numbers, so to say. It doesn't really give a cutoff a cut value. But for that, a 0.5 is already pretty good. Right? That is a pretty strong correlation between the assessors. Now, why is there so much discussion about it? Well, if you increase the number of categories that an assessor can put a product in, or you increase the number of assessors, that number changes, it really changes, especially if you have more categories, the expected value of this number is just gonna drop down because the chance that people really have a good way of choosing between multiple categories, the chance gets lower and lower, just, just because the difference between the categories is most likely also going to be lower. But to give you a bit of uh, some 
handholds here. If we're talking just a few categories, over 0 0.40, 0 0.50 is pretty good. When we're getting into the 0.70 and higher, that is a good measurement system. So the expected values are a bit lower. You use this mainly to see, can we improve it and have we improved it? So take that for what it's worth. Just to get a bit of an overview, up to four or so, anything over 0.5 is probably good enough. When you're getting to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, oh, that, is, that is always going to be low. Right? So that, that, that's the, the feeling scale. Now there is one more caveat to this system that I would like to share with you. You can use this, you can use it for binary if you want to, by the way. If you just want uh, to have multiple assessors, that's not the caveat, by the way, I'll get to the caveat. If you just want to have multiple assessors, which is not possible in a Kohan Scapa, you just do this with the same six people, right? Or 10 or 50, whatever you like, uh, and a bunch of products. And you use exactly the same formulas. And then, you know, anything over 0.5 is pretty good. Anything over 0.7, really nice. So then you expect that slightly higher value. But you can also use this for what we call nominal or ordinal data. So binaries, two choices, pass, fail usually. Nominal data, that is categories that don't really relate. Right? Uh, car, color. Red, blue, yellow, something else. A car that is blue is not yellow and a bit. It, it's just, it's a name. But ordinal data implies an order to the categories. So if you say this is first class fruit, second class fruit, good enough for animal feed, needs to be destroyed. Well, there is a definite ranking in the categories, right? So you might have this example here and say, but that is actually worse than when you do this. And so if the majority says it is a category C, then I definitely don't want one of my assessors saying it is an A. The caveat of this type of cap analysis is that that is not taken into account. You see that the value here just checks how many agree versus how many don't agree. And by what margin? Not taken into account. So actually, I am looking for another way to do that and everybody, even Minitab, suggests you use Kendall's W for that. I have checked that method. No, that is not for a categorized system. That is only if you rank the total. So if there's statisticians out there, if you are a uh, more statistically inclined than myself, a person who sort of knows what I mean, I want the, the ranking of the ordinal categories, but not the ranking of the products, to be weighed into the agreement factors. Does that test exist? Let me know in the comments. But for now, I can say this system works for binary and nominal and ordinal. So you can expand a number of categories, and this way you can have basically as many assessors as you want. And that is really strong. So if you liked this thing, again, hit that like button, and I'll repeat that question. How many of you are interested in, in me just putting out a template to do this? It'll, it'll take me a bit of time. I'll probably not make it free. Let me know also, right? Should, should this stuff be, of course, you'd like it for free. But I would sort of like to put a couple of these nice template files instead of opening a Patreon or something like that. Just give a bit back to the community, useful, and a, a way to support this channel as well. I think it's only fair. Let me know. Also, let me know if there's other statistical tools that you would like me to explain. And for now, I wish you the best of luck assessing your measurement systems and specifically checking if your people agree on the classification of your product. Can you really just trust your measurements? And as always, don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.